So many townhouses are challenged by those dark, small rooms, not this one. What you have is a downtown, uptown loft. Who needs a house in the country when you have this? I'm Sarah Gore and you're watching Open House NYC. We've got a great show this week filled with renovated classics and ultra modern showstoppers. And I'm bringing it to you from this sky high apartment in Nomad that soars over the city with floor to ceiling, northeast and western exposures. This apartment was designed to maximize that light and an easy flow between its open entertaining areas. Imagine lounging or hosting framed by the city lights. It also features luxurious fixtures and finishes throughout, including this chef's kitchen. There's four bedrooms, including the regal primary suite in its very own wing, where you could wake up and practically touch the Empire State Building. Fay Ray, eat your heart out. In all, the home is over 3,300 square feet of New York opulence. We are starting things off in Harlem at this newly renovated historical townhouse. I can't wait for you to see the graceful open flow between its living and entertaining areas with easy access to multiple outdoor spaces, including this generous back garden. Take a look and enjoy. Harlem is full of surprises. Community gardens with ponds, Beautiful, big, wide streets, great architecture, but the real surprises lie behind the doors of these historic brownstones. I'm Brian Lewis, and today I'm gonna to show you 123 West 132nd Street, and I know it's gonna take your breath away. When you walk into a home from 1910 that's been totally reinvented, you're looking for signs of detail. Now, these owners did something very smart. They left the classic DNA of this home where they could, and then they brought a 21st century relevance that will last a lifetime. The challenges when you're redoing a townhouse are what to keep and what to go. So you wanna maintain some of the history to keep that DNA, but you also wanna bring a new energy to it. And this home right here did something very special because they moved the kitchen right to the middle of the townhouse, capitalizing on the southern light from the dining area and the big garden views from the upstairs living room. Marble countertops, dining bar, top-end fixtures, trophy appliances, gorgeous walnut cabinets. This becomes the centerpiece of this floor and every detail is exactly the way it should be. The dining area is a perfect place to show you the details they left. These are original from 1910. This molding came with the house back in the early part of the 20th century. All that Southern light on the tree line that just spills into the rest of the parlor. So many townhouses are challenged by those dark, small rooms, not this one. They blew out the parlor floor. And what you have is a downtown, uptown loft. And they took out the entire back wall and replaced it with a wall of glass. Who needs a house in the country when you have this? You've got your deck, you've got your barbecue, you're overlooking your own private backyard. This is just one living room though. Downstairs is living room number two. Yes, a second living room. You've got a wood-burning fireplace, a wet bar, a workstation, and more floor-to-ceiling walls of glass that open up onto that private garden. Now this, this is the payoff in a townhouse, your own private backyard in the middle of the city. Big sky, evergreen tree, watering system, lighting system. Now I'm gonna take you up to an entire floor that is dedicated to the primary bedroom. Now this is a primary suite. What an amazing retreat. Pin drop quiet 
With views of your own private garden and that gorgeous evergreen tree, a decorative fireplace, but there's more to it than just this bedroom. Here you get an entire floor with a pass-through closet, beautifully designed, a pass-through marble bath with its own water closet, dual sinks, huge step-in shower, and then you end up in your own private office on the tree line, a floor through, cross breezes. Oh, this, this is special. It has been an absolute pleasure showing you around this Harlem secret, an historical townhouse that's been completely redesigned and reimagined for the 21st century. I'll see you at the next one. Coming up just after the break, high-end design in the Mile High City. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Denver, Colorado for a look at this one-of-a-kind historical landmarked home. Built in the late 1800s, the building has served many purposes throughout its life, but has now been converted into a sleek, modern, art-filled entertainer's dream home. With, of course, a seamless flow between its indoor and outdoor spaces. Take a look. Hi, I'm Kenzie with Sotheby's International Realty. Welcome to Denver, Colorado. Today we're at 400 St. Paul Street, located in the heart of the Cherry Creek North neighborhood. And I don't think it's an understatement to say this is one of the best homes Colorado has to offer. Let me show you inside. Harmon Hall, as it is known, was built in 1891 as the town hall for the area. This is before it was incorporated into Denver. Over the years, it's been a town hall, a mayor's office, and even a courthouse. But now, this stately property has been converted into a jaw-dropping private residence. Perfect for entertaining on a grand scale, inside or out. Filled with unforgettable rooms, intricate detail, and the very best of modern luxury living. This home is actually made up of the original structure and a contemporary addition, but the foyer sets the tone. Though in the same position as the original entry when it was an office and a courthouse, it's been renovated into a gallery-like showstopper filled with light. Light that continues throughout. As you move into this home, you notice all the floor-to-ceiling windows that look out onto this relaxing courtyard. This level is made up of all of your main living and entertaining spaces. These include this expansive formal dining area. I'm telling you, invite everyone you know and dine in style. How could you not hear? This library is designed as an homage to the Gilded Age. Check out the reclaimed wood beams and vintage maps plastered on the ceiling. Not a bad spot to finally finish that novel or that last glass of bourbon. This kitchen area is something you have to see to believe. It's the true heart of the home. A place to cook like a chef, eat like a pig, or lounge like a boss. And it all leads to the private oasis that is the back garden. And opening up this floor to ceiling sliding glass door completely erases the line between inside and out. Anyone up for a dip? I'm just joking, later. El Fresco entertaining continues in this area, which I can only describe as a party paradise. I mean, I've been here for events with over 100 people and it doesn't feel crowded. And speaking of events, you'll easily keep them hydrated with this over a thousand bottle wine cellar and tasting room. And for more exclusive occasions, there's the coolest speakeasy carved into the underground garage. And for movie night, a theater. Now, let's go take a look at the primary suite. Upstairs, this entire floor is the dreamy primary suite. Not only does it have a beautiful bedroom, but it also has a sitting room, office, and this grand, luxurious bathroom. And the closets, let me tell you, they are straight from the boutiques of Melrose. 
and I can't forget about the bedroom terrace. On the top floor, there's a full gym and a rooftop terrace, but you get the picture. This place is amazing and it's one of a kind. I mean, this whole place, you'll never wanna leave, but leave we must. Thank you so much for coming. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go grab a drink in the speakeasy. Just after the break, we are bringing it back to New York for this modern Tribeca loft. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. And now for a contemporary take on loft living in the heart of Tribeca. Located on one of its many classic cobblestone streets, this chic abode is airy and filled with natural light and an easy flow from living spaces all the way to that relaxing primary suite. See for yourself. Stunning, sophisticated, and contemporary, this is downtown living at its best. I'm Jennifer Kalish with Douglas Element. Welcome to this fabulous Tribeca Loft. Perched on a historic cobblestone street in one of the most desirable neighborhoods in town, this full floor south facing apartment has four bedrooms and close to 3,000 square feet of boutique living. Let's have a look. Like a classic loft, you step right off the elevator into your private foyer. A stylish and practical entry, this home was meticulously reimagined by designer Sean Henderson. And this is just a glimpse of what's to come. And come on in to this grand entertaining space. Here you could see the meticulous design aesthetic of the home and see it bathed in all day sunlight through this wall of windows with alternating channel vision glass. Taking the views of Leonard Street and the beautiful architecture all around, no detail has been spared. From the wide plank floors to the custom clean burning fireplace with steel facade that is the focal point of this relaxing living room. Enjoy a cocktail with friends before heading into the chef's kitchen. Finished in Italian white lacquer with stained oak cabinetry. This kitchen is well appointed with top end appliances and for you wine enthusiasts, it even has two wine refrigerators. Plenty of counter space may entice you to think twice before heading out to the fabulous neighborhood restaurants. But if you do stay in, this adjoining dining room is large enough for a dinner party or cozy enough for taco night. Right off the great room, through this custom steel door, is this awesome soundproof den where you could watch the game, read, or even take a nap. Down this gallery hall is an in-home gym that also doubles as a bedroom. Or you could rock out in the oversized music room that doubles as a library. This private primary suite is as relaxing as the great room is exciting. It has a generous bedroom, quaint balcony, five fixture bath, and a ginormous walk-in closet. It's a perfect place to end any day. Thank you so much for taking the time to tour with me this exceptional downtown loft that's both stylish and comfortable. Give me a call if you want to make Tribeca your home. Just after the break, we are in LA for a tour of this ultra modern Bel Air estate you do not want to miss. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Bel Air for a look at this brand new hillside home with sweeping views from virtually every space. It was created as a sleek cinematic escape filled with imaginative architectural and design touches inside and out. Hello, this is Ramtin Ray Nosrati and welcome to the Bel Air Escape. This is where you escape from everything. You're on top of the world, surrounded with nature. First thing you notice when you drive down the private driveway is this beautiful living wall. 
This living wall is built with a variety of species. This is actually the first living wall that greets you, but the minute you walk into the home, you are greeted by this beautiful wraparound moss wall, which has a skylight from above and wraps around down to the lower level. Yeah, the beautiful thing about this moss wall, I wanted to go ahead and create an art piece. So what we ended up doing is staining it with organic fruit coloring to go ahead and give it this look and this will last a lifetime. Let's go check out the primary. Now, if you remember, I mentioned the home name being Escape, and this is one of the main reasons why. Surrounded by glass walls and an automated glass door from floor to ceiling, waking up here makes you want to embrace every morning and every day. From up here, you're on top of the world. One of my favorite parts about the primary is the wraparound balcony with an L-shaped fire pit and just enjoy the amazing Pacific Ocean and city lights. The primary bath is definitely one of a kind. Again, wrapped around with automated pocket doors, being able to go ahead and enjoy this amazing California indoor outdoor weather. Uh, we can't forget talking about the stone here in the primary shower. Custom imported stone, and as you see, it's all book match to perfection, and it's about just bringing in nature into the property. What makes it so special about this entertainment area is the open floor plan. This is our living room. Coffered ceilings above with the white oak wood. You got the fireplace that wrapped around in travertine, and you got floor to ceiling glass just looking at this amazing wine cellar. And before we go to the kitchen, I gotta show you this amazing hand carved stone bar, which matches the stairway. The opposite end of the bar, we have a dining room, looking out to the backyard or looking out again to the open floor plan. And for me, it all finishes at the kitchen because the kitchen is where the heart of the home is. All together, this floor plan is one cohesive entertainment area. This backyard is surrounded by the amazing city and ocean view. Your outdoor kitchen on this side right here with a big screen, 130 inch LED TV and an 80 feet zero edge infinity pool. The roof deck feel like you're on top of the world. You got this oversized 16 feet fireplace with a full outdoor kitchen right behind me with a putting green that just adds the cherry on top of the cake. And this wraps up the tour. Thank you so much for joining me. And don't forget, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. Till the next one. Coming up in just a few short minutes, a mix of the classic and the contemporary at this townhouse in Brooklyn. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn for a look at how designer Louisa Roeder married the original details of her brownstone with her contemporary aesthetic. Take a look. Hi, my name is Louisa Roeder. I'm a Brooklyn-based interior designer and welcome to my home. So this is a landmarked Brooklyn brownstone built in 1870 and the reason I love it is because it has all these original details that you don't find in new construction. In traditional brownstones, you enter on the parlor level and the first room you see is the living room. So I wanted to pay special attention to decorating it. That's really easy though when you have a working fireplace. I wanted to have the room centered around it, but it was a tricky configuration since the room is long and narrow. So I made three distinct seating areas and I used one large rug to unify those three spaces. The advantage of this configuration is that it cozies up the space. There's a seating area in front of the fireplace and then a separate seating area by the windows. And I paid particular attention to the furnishings in here, including these two armchairs. So I found these two mid-century scoop chairs that I placed in the corner and I also reupholstered them from the original black leather. 
One of my personal favorite rugs is the one in front of the fireplace. The geometric motif is very unusual, and it just so happened that it matched the motif in the mirror surround. Again, it's just part of my thought process to make sure that things tie in together. I usually don't like overhead lighting with the exception of pendants and chandeliers, and I custom designed this light fixture with my friend and light designer, Paul Piacinelli, that he endearingly refers to as the Taj, and he used repurposed materials from old Brooklyn brownstones. Right off the living room and through these original sliding doors is the kitchen. This is by far the most modern room in the house, but like the living room, the focus was on lighting. For that reason, I painted all of the wood moldings white. Again, for the light fixtures, I went to my friend Paul Pisanelli because I wanted them designed very specifically for this space. The light fixtures over the kitchen island, Paul found these repurposed X-ray lampshades. And for the light over the dining table, again, Paul made this fixture, which is very distinctive and I love that the black ties in the accents around the windows and the countertops. I love to entertain, so I want to make sure the dining table was large enough to host parties. For the oversized kitchen island, again, I wanted to make sure that I kept things bright, so painted the wood white, and I even painted the brick backsplash white. In the master bedroom, I wanted it to feel very warm and relaxing. It has more upholstery than any other room in the house, and I feel like it really softens the mood. Though all the furnishings are upholstered, they're in different textures. But I kept all the colors neutral, because I find that to be the most relaxing. Since this is a larger room, I felt like I had space for a seating area, and again, the layered rug. I had the headboard built to take up the entire wall of this nook, so it felt like a very cocoon-like space. Because I love having mementos from my travels, I also have this tapestry from my friend from Mumbai. Thank you for joining me in my home today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my well-lit, cozy, and eclectic home. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>